over 150 people killed in the past year, those including children, women, journalists. In the next report, as 2022 ends, we will try to understand what will the future in the next year bring for the people in the West Bank. Also, what would the appointment of Benjamin Netanyahu as the new Prime Minister for Israel mean for the region? Let's take a look. West Bank, the region marred with violence and conflict. And 2022 is said to have marked the deadliest year for Palestinians in this region in over a decade's time period. The increased ferocity can be attributed to incessant Israeli raids. Now, with the new government in power in the Knesset, let's try and understand what could the future hold for the West Bank. Israel's new government policy outline stated that it would strive for peace with all neighbors. The veteran leader, Benjamin Netanyahu, who has made a comeback as Israeli premier, has sought to calm concerns about the fate of civil rights and diplomacy. <laughs> The 73-year-old has repeatedly pledged to promote tolerance and pursue peace. He told Israeli parliament that ending the Israeli-Arab conflict is his top priority. But does this mean Israel wants peace with the West Bank too? Well, let's remind you, the new government's policy's first guiding principle list has also cited assertions of exclusive and unassailable Jewish national rights throughout the land of Israel. It seemed that the terminology included the West Bank and East Jerusalem as well. For Palestinians, Benjamin Netanyahu's government lineup has simply darkened an already bleak view. Netanyahu will lead Israel's most right-wing government ever. His allies include the religious Zionism and Jewish power parties. These parties oppose Palestinian statehood. His victory received a sharp rebuttal from Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. As he bemoaned the establishment of an Israeli government whose alleged motto is extremism and apartheid. The Netanyahu government that aims to expand Jewish settlements in the occupied West Bank have stoked criticism at home and abroad alike, as most world powers deem building settlements on land captured in war illegal. The Israeli-Palestine conflict has left West Bank bruised and battered. On December the 22nd, scores of Palestinians marched in funeral procession mourning the death of a 23-year-old Palestinian combatant who was killed by Israeli forces in clashes. Israeli military said that its forces were securing the entrance of Israelis to Joseph's tomb in the West Bank city of Nablus. This is when Palestinians hurled explosive devices and fired at them. According to Israel, the soldiers returned fire and hits were identified. The Hamas group, which governs blockaded Gaza, has identified deceased Ahmad Darachme as a member. Palestinian officials said Darachme was a football player and he belonged to Tuba city situated near Nablus. He was the best soccer scorer. Ahmad joined Kulkarim team and once he did, he scored six goals. He made Kulkarim proud of him. They would all talk about him and say, Ahmad Atif Dargami. Captain Ahmad, he used to send me the videos and ask me to watch him. For the past 10 days, he had been sending them to me over Messenger and asking me to comment on them. I asked him why he's sending me. And apparently, it was because he's going and that I would have the videos to see. He used to tell me not to cry over him if he dies and would tell me to see all other mothers who lost sons, and I would say, I cannot do that. But now my tears have run dry. My tears have run dry. 
West Bank witnessed the worst levels of violence in more than a decade this year. Much of it was concentrated around Nablus and the nearby city of Jenin. The relentless Israeli strikes in these regions led to the killing of at least 150 Palestinians. The violence also left more than 20 Israelis dead. Israel captured the West Bank, East Jerusalem and Gaza in a 1967 Middle East war. The Palestinians seek these areas for an independent state. The violence between the two establishments and diplomatic stagnation increased since the U.S. brokered negotiations collapsed in 2014. Bureau Report, We On, World Is One.